afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting, a riveting, amazing propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane, the master propaganda hero, psych defender of the fatherland, off here to one Mrs. One. Oh no, Langara Sky in the north, it's Angreifen. Oh, Pan's gonna be Angreifen. Fighting here for the Wehrmacht, Germany, Deutschland, rolling out here with the Panzerlehr Panzer Edition. Versus in the south, it's von Aston, fighting for America, freedom, democracy, liberty. Taking on the role here of the 6th Armour Division. We got Spearhead, we got Infantry, and we got Mobile Defensive of Vanguard from the Double Infantry Panzerfaust. Versus Heavy Cavalry, Recon Support, and Mechanized Company with Machine Gun and Infantry Bulletins here for von Aston. Double Rifle Start here, both players of course are highly experienced veteran players. Gunadier setting out, they're following out on the MD-42 and the Pioneers here for Ungreifen. Note his capping order here, goes first munitions, then into the fuel there, and then the, grabs the curve point later. It's certainly becoming a slightly more, uh, shall we say, advanced capping order. You usually see for players with usually leaving sort of later units than actually grab some of the curve points while you rush for the important points in some cases. In this case, he's in fact moving the MD-42 straight up for the cutoff or the center victory point as well, which also, by the way, in most cases serves as a, another cutoff point. Pani's moving eastwards there. Uh, Fonassi moving westward so far. Not rushing for the center. He might in fact be anticipating the MD-42 since in most cases that... It's an early, in some cases that's what you expect rush here for the center victory point. If you know Angreifen, you'd very much anticipate that particular move. Moving straight here for the fuel, though he's noting up he's quickly wiring off the exit here in this side of the house. So uh, only he can effectively use the uh, building there. Rifle versus going to here. First shots fired between these two players. Fanas in this case quickly backs off. He could try and rush it, but I mean moving across an exit cover towards a unit in heavy cover. And even with the Raffin being as strong as they are, that would not be a good push there for Fanas. And of course he just backs off. Very smart decision making in the MD42 covering up his slight repositioning. Almost got the Eastern Fuel Point. Gonna do some lonesome here in the West. Got the Eastern versus Gunnadies. Again falling back here. Fanas and Solish have now an steadily increasing idea there how the Ungarden's forces are positioned against central forces eastwards here. Like you're trying to outflank Angreifen through the east, possibly through the west as well. We'll have to see exactly what Fnassen does here. But MG42 covers the center and a bit here, the uh, slight east side here. Going for deep flank, he's like going to move for the no, nope, does not go straight for the fuel point. I would think he maybe just skip the point here and go straight for the fuel point. And with this, he does risk uh, alerting Angreifen if he pays attention to the min map that he's grabbing the point here, which would give Angreifen more time to then move up forces to test this. Then again, that might in fact be exactly what Finesse is hoping hope to draw forces in towards these. And of course, that's obviously what I want to do in the long term, but you know, even towards here, I think the better move would actually be getting towards the fuel point here since it's further behind the front line around this, which is close to the front line, that's easy to react to. But there we go, push up the west side. So it does look like he's making sort of a double push here, one that sort of essentially serves as a distraction meant to draw away forces from the front line towards the rear line. And there you go, slight positioning here. We got Raffin Cup. Coming the calf point, he's perhaps wait, hoping that Ungarden's going to take the bait there, and he does. At the same time, he's straightening the calf point there. So, so far, the machine has been dispatched to deal with the Western Force. The Eastern Force here again is a bit on its own. Gunnadis moving in, but he's in heavy cover there, and light cover. He needs to quickly prioritize the Pioneers, so because the Pioneers get close to that, they're taking too much damage there. Yeah, he's going to try and sort of trick now, try and bull rush the rifle here. Pioneers are going to use to have a chance of as a rifleman, since the Pioneers have reasonable DPS up close. Not on their own, they can sort of beat the rifle, but we're backed up by Gunnadiers. It's suddenly become a bit more formidable up here. Or back here, Gunnadiers versus Rifle. Fanassen is seemingly slightly winning that one. In the west, he's being pushed back here. His forces overwhelmed here by the MD42 flank. Possibly not anticipating Ungarden being that flexible as MD42. Fast take here for Fanassen. We've got the M20 on the way. So Fanassen is quickly trying to you know, shift the battlefield in his favor. He's trying to be aggressive. And Bold versus Ungarden, which is why he's willing to go for the M20, since that's obviously a lot faster than the Stuart Light tank. It is a bit rare here in most times. You only see it used by the Americans if the Vermont player has gone for a sniper. So an interesting move there by Van Aston. No sign of doctrines here for both sides. M20 halfway done for Van Aston and the 6th Armoured Rifle holding up here. Like to make a nice company being rushed out there. Van Aston is probably anticipating light vehicles already. Well, I'm not sure if he's anticipating the M20. But we shall see. Our way though, the two to two does lock that down and send also a bit the uh, risk and roll. Of course, we can throw down a good amount of certain spot and then bait the two to two into it. No problem there for Von Aston. Armored squads being added to the M20 utility cart, backing up here, push into the east. 
One of these under fires the 50 caliber rakes here, punching through the wooden walls of the house, leading poor Ginter to wonder why exactly are they holding up in a wooden house? 50 caliber following up, never for Nassen to help deal with the infantry of Angreifen. Not a bad move at all. Also, help there's light vehicles and turning you know, with his arm piercing rounds can quickly punch a lot of very big holes in a 222, which is exactly what I'm going to go for. In particular, he has seen the M20, he knows exactly what he wants. And there you go, turning up to quick cut off the house. They've so, in case I'm going to stick around for too long, he's going to get murdered. Putting the fuel pond there, nice push here by Fonassen. Basically, instead of just trying to push through the center, which is what some players will do, he makes for you know deep push through the east side until he breaks through there. Since Angarten is more focused about the center, in this case, oh, he might even get the MD42 here with the M20 rifle combo there. No, Angarten retreats just in the nick of time. They're really close though, that uh, Fnatic got here. Push for the cop on this quickly uh, deterred here by the rifle. But still, a nice push here by Fnatic versus Angarten, definitely for a more of a bit. But we got the 2 2 on the way, and then there you go, a double uh oh for Fnatic as the M20 gets panned past it. He pops smoke, but the 2 2 is inbound. He's got. The fifth coming up. Oh, he's popping armor piercing rounds as well. Nice out there for Naston. Quickly also popping out here. Martin will take up to the 2 2 here. Armor piercing rounds going off there. He's almost got it. Almost. And yes, he gets the 2 2 2 without losing the M20. An expert defense there by Fonaston. Completely turned the tables there. And guy from turning a bad situation into a win. That is some beautiful skill there by Fonaston. Beautiful. Ambulance following up there for Fonaston as Ungarven tries to react here to. Uh, Fnaston's moves trying to show up his defenses around the center. I think for now conceding the eastern ground here. Might even try to outflank here for Naston, but for Naston, of course, quick reaction to the fifth cup, which is, of course, very flexible, very mobile. In this case, with two many grenadiers here and being a bit too slow to set up there properly, it is routed. Still, that was very close. They could hold the grenadiers there, but again, Angarden there went all in, hoping that the fifth cup was a bit too slow. In this case, it was. Still, Angarden's forces are in a bit of a slim spot there in terms of force size compared to Fnaston, who's now got a much larger force, and he still has the M20. Angarven, though, is a true believer here in the 2 2 2. Oh, Rifman off against Rifman. Doesn't end up doing enough. Otherwise, at least cutting off the fuel point, ensuring that Fnaston does not get too much fuel here, which, of course, would ensure the match no lord here. And here we go. Fnaston, though, perhaps making a bit of a mistake, though, trying to manage too much else. Takes another rifle grenade hit there, which almost wipes out the rifle squad, and that's likely going to be a full wipe here on Fnaston, which is certainly going to help Angarven compensate a bit for his losses. And there you go. Full wipe, also noting Angarven lost his pioneers. So, there you go. Rifle squad loss should help a bit, but even then, I mean, with the three units from the tech up here, of course, Fnaston still has a lot of advantage here. But will Fnaston be expecting the second to the Angarven? That tends to be a bit uh, rare for some players. Most players only tend to stick to one. A few bolder ones will go for two, but there you go, two to two moving in. He can set up fifth cover there with the armor piercing rounds. Can he pull off lightning in a bottle twice here? And there you go, a bit more fire here, but this time around, the fifth cover can't. Oh, can it? Using the reaction to repair while under fire, and he gets a second 2 to 2 as well. A double disaster blow there, and another beautiful save there by Fnaston against the uh, 2 to 2 here. Clearly, I think he might have trained this out actually, just using the fifth cover to use the bag up the M20 and using this excellent bait here for the 2 2 2s. Very solid counter tactic there by Fnaston, very solid. But there we go, Angarv realizing he has to sort of switch something up. He's making a push into the west side of the territory, which has been neglecting. Very good. Will he go for more 2 2 2s, or what will Angarv do? Will he go for Jaeger infantry, maybe Jaeger command squads? I mean, he's got options, but right now the options are looking a bit rough here. Fnaston is just piling on as he should be here versus the German player. I'm trying to be clearing out the bar wire as well. Very good. Lieutenant, right from up here, Pioneer's probably into the house, but they're going to get wiped here if Angarv does not retreat right away. There we go, sets up in front of the exit path there. That could very well end up with another white peak. Another win there for Van Essen versus Ungarven, who goes for another 2-2. Two two. Certainly a sign here that Ungarven is feeling a lot of pressure and doesn't really have a lot of other good options. He goes for another 2-2. Two two. But will this one fare the exact same fast as the fate as the previous two as he just maybe, you know, just takes the bait again? We'll have to see if he's learned anything this time around. Second 50 cover hold up here, and of course this is going to make it harder for the 2-2 two to move about safely. And these hold up here under fire, and then there you go, hitting the western fuel point. Maybe in just using these attacks to just keep Fnassen's attention focused on the east half of the map and line to more safely secure the west side. In which case, a nice setup there by the Angarfen, though of course a bit risky. I'll wait to destroy the fifth cup of rifling up here. What will Angarfen do is counter attack straight into the forces, not trying to outmaneuver here. In the east, vehicle crew M20 there by the now crew with the re echelons, he's just keeping the vehicle crew now constant anti-tank duty and there you go Rafa no extending here versus the two to Rafa Grenadiers and the Pioneers but 50 cal there to the rescue ensures they do not get wiped 
And we get armor pierce from Ranch again. He sees the two but this time around the arm garden is a bit swift here to try and move back. Gonna lease the current the right flank and there you go, racing's popping out. Fifth carbon number two here. Also popping armor piercing rounds. He is really swift for those armor piercing rounds. See? Ready to lock down the two to it any moment's notice. And there you go. Almost gets the third two to two. But this time though, this time Arngarten escapes with it. MP42, they're hammering away. Two kills so far. Veterans one to two. He's gonna need some dire repairs. We'll have to see what he does next here. Gonna these down the west here. Almost fully reinforced by but they rush out a bit fast here. And they're going to send Yamaha Pismon around here to return the favor. There we go, getting some good hits off them. 20. Fnash and they realize it just in time. There you go. 50 Cal now getting hammered here by the MD42 with the Nintendo Yamaha Pismon rounds. Getting better here too. 50 Cal was taking heavy damage here. Gunnity is pinned down. Killing another gunner here on the 50 Cal crew troops here. Reinforcing healing. Gunnity is flanking up. Rafa grenading the 50 Cal. Oh! Almost got the 50 Cal there. Deep, nice flank there by Ongarven. Really solid play there. Didn't get the 50 cover, didn't quite get the prize there, but he was close. He was very close. All the way, though, that should give him a bit of breathing space. Of course, for Nassen, he's already taking up. He's got the mage out, and he's not far off from Sherman Tank, while his own garden still is only 1 2 2 2. He's going to need pack 40. He's going to need a lot of them to stand a chance here versus for Nassen. Otherwise, I mean, Ungarden is in deep uh, bratwurst. Did you make us Lieutenant wrapping up here? For Nassen, he's just keeping up pressure. Also trying to regain the lost west here to uh, America and freedom, of course, once more. And before two setting up, these pushing east was where well, they regain the territories they lost to the armies. Rough grenade off, it gets a quick kill. Then go for the pack 40 now, and he probably shirt before Fnass and just snowballs him again with a Sherman. We're talking a snowball with a rock concealed inside of it. The cheeky boss, and there you go, pack 40 in the way there. Ungarden is harboring no illusions, that's what's coming. He knows exactly how this tune goes. Finessen is not here to play Cotton Eye Kyo, he's here to play Stop the Nazis with tanks. Pack 40 halfway down there for Hungarven. Gonna do this versus 50 Calva. Going heavy cover, he might have a chance there. Big with the moving ahead, Pack 40 almost done. He might also benefit from a few Panzer Gonna these at least a few more other elements. Another MP4 we think could also help a bunch of those of Nassen. Coming out the west side, looking to swiftly claim territory here from the uh, Angreifen and the German army. And there you go, first Sherman all the way there. Very well played there by uh, Von Nassen. Mortar on the way there for Angreifen, a bit of support weaponry really that way. Gonna this moving up there to defend the point here. Big push into the east level. There's only one gonna this squad is able to hold up for Nassen's assault here. No grenades, so which could certainly make things harder there. Fine, come to defend with. Gonna this right in the center east. Leaving the machine gun out to cover the center. Oh, he's repositioning. Be careful about that. To zooming up the east side to this stall and by time here in the east. Sherman almost done here. Pioneer's got the point. Noting he's got minesweepers. He's assuming that Fnassen may lay down mines with the M20, which is a really good thing to assume. I don't think Fnassen has done it, but he very well could do it, and certainly. Yeah, I'd be very unpleasant that if Ungarth was not ready for an M20 minus, that could mean, you know, say he actually gets a tank out and then gets mobilized, at which point it's game over, and particularly say it's a Tiger. Like, he rushes out a Tiger, it gets mobilized, that'd be a very easy win then for Fnassen. But so far, there's no sign of that. Oh, your first pack 40 out here, more to repositioning a bit as well. Deep gun not in the effort. And they're going for a free up right there for, for Nassen, adding the 50 cover there, the Mardus. And we got here the Tutu make up against the Major. But we got a 50 cover back up again with armor piercing rounds. Absolutely lightning reflexes when it comes to that. Pack 40 here versus the Sherman sent him 20 backing up here. Smokes in off. Quite far off there. Still, easily allows the Sherman to pull back. There we go, I'm going to bling down telemines. Has a bit of room to do it, so that's a good idea there. As long as he doesn't get spotted, then that's fine. Oh, he was close there, but it's not. Mm, oh no, he's going to get spotted here. Give it away here to uh, Fnassen. Again, Fnassen may not notice it, in which case that could work out there. Fine, Garth in the center, showing up against the Gunnadies in the west. Gunnadies held down by suppressor fire, and we got to take up this rather Fine, Garth, knowing he has to take up. He has to move fast. There you go, quick hit here on the. Uh, M20, I think that's the mortar doing the job there, and there we go, setting off the grenade with a bazooka. I got in this case, and might have tried to move a bit too fast as so he didn't get to finish it again, thus we're reading it to Fonassen. I'll wait nicely handled there by Fonassen. A single bazooka rocket did the job. Certainly uh, 
limiting Fonas on gotten chance of stalling Fonas and Zahn at Rash. More to continue to have away there, take almost sand fiction up to 2 2 there with one kill, but close veterans one fuel point east about to be lost here to Van Aston. And the sixth armor division there go, we got heavy cavalry out for Van Aston. Perhaps he's feeling so confident he's going to try and soul here for a Pershing next, that'll be bold. Of course, it also opens up for sandbags and uh, mines for riflemen, which is, you know, not bad at all either. And he's going for a third 50 cal, but he's just really looking to constrain Ungarden's infantry and light vehicles there by adding a third 50 cal to the arsenal. Not a bad idea. Robin suppressed it, then before two Kennedy's wing and back up with the 2 to 2. But. Fanas lay down the law here of the land. Moves up with a lot of infantry and the 50 cal there. Of course, worth noting we got weapon max on luck there with the ARs being handed out. Morty could try and likely gonna try and bombard the fifth cover there. Victory points wise. Ungarden though does have a lead out for Nasson H enough who's actually only managed to bleed off eight points there for Ungarden. So I guess that's something that's reasonably working out well there for uh, Ungarden versus Van Aston. We will likely I think see a Panzer for I mean, in this situation though Stug I think would be Pretty solid, in particular, was actually expecting Pershings, in which case a pair of Stugs could be really good long term. But he's going for double pack 40s here, so I think he's likely to go for the Panther Foot to just help focus on the infantry as well. Gunnadies could stand to be upgraded with a light machine and for a bit of add on to infantry versus for National. So, again, I think there's some uh, slightly more favorable exchanges. And there you go. Fnas does begin laying down mines for the M20. Very good spot. There's also kind of an obvious spot. So we'll have to see how that one works out. Okay, 40 on the way there. Fun. Guy from almost done. So there you go. We got the M6 and the tank mine down. Rather than fire here from the 2 2 and the mortar. We've got pioneers going ahead as well with the mine sweepers. Oh, nice hit from the mortar getting veterans to one. Big push into these two with Gunnadies and before 2 trying to stall up here against Fanaston's assault. Pack forward there joining in the chorus of death. Got the major moving up by time, quarters until here on his position, except he does not have the Middle Eastern Gunnadies feeling here at the front line. Not because he doesn't have a medic bunker, because he doesn't want to retreat the Gunnadies, so he just uh, quickly use the net pack so he doesn't have to retreat them. Sherman there is the pack 40, direct hit here from the Panzer up at Canona, Panzer Vassal as well. Smoke off here, but he could risk losing the Sherm here to Ungarden's anti tank defense. Will he be able to pull it off? And Gunnadies almost fogged out, and he does get the Sherman, that's a definite win there for Ungarden versus Von Aston. The Sherman is kaput. That's going to give Ungarden just a bit more breathing space there versus Von Aston, a bit of a blow there to Von Aston, but obviously Von Aston has plenty of resources and. Though again, it does look like he might be going straight for the Pershing still, so there's a potential that Ungarden there. Could get enough breathing space to sort of recover from that. We'll have to see. But it's a definite possibility. Not there you go. Fanaston goes for the Jackson Tank Destroyer. Fanaston is not a silly player. He's not just going to stall for the Pershing just because he can. He realizes pressure against his opponent is important, though. The Jackson's obviously more preparatory. So he's anticipating that Ankar will be going for some medium armor of his own, which case he wants the Jackson ready, though, of course. If Ankar were to be stalling for a target tank, the Jackson will also be helping. And I imagine that might be sort of why he's going for the Jackson. He's sort of hedging his bets. He's expecting some sort of armor, but he's not attached to the, ta the target tank with just regular armor. If he's really sure it's just regular armor, he might just go for the Sherman again. But with the potential of a target there from Ungarfen, Ungarfen, I think he's just making the sensible decision going for the Jackson. That way, again, hedging his bets versus both types of sort of armor Ungarfen could be calling in around this timing. Push up the eastern side here, could do with a bit of smoke here. He does have dots on smoke, and he's got lots of sort of other types of smoke. I think sort of push up the assault here. That does make it easier for Ungarden to defend because Van Aston's clearly not comfortable using uh, that kind of smoke to screen up the assault. He probably wants to use it more reactive in uh, tight spots. And obviously, he lacks grenades. Obviously, you can just throw down smoke into the, his officers. Right here, the assault is encountering severe resistance from Ungarden, and he Panzer Leo Panzer Shawn putting up a glorious fight in which Finesse and likely uh, is not going to forget anytime soon. 50 cal here versus the Pioneers in the West, Panther on the way there for Ungarden. We got smoke down from Ungarden instead, I think? 
Not entirely sure what he's doing. I think he's trying to hit the small team, but misclicked. Ooh, Jack's moving in, engaging with its 90 mm gun. More riflemen for Nesson. He could also have gone for Rangers here, but I guess he just decides he wants riflemen. Fifth cover here. Ace level, very nice there by Finaston. Got double pack ports in the center. He's obviously wanting to stop the jacks in the west. He could conserve, you know, find some mortar smoke down there, just regular mortar fire. Oh, wait, Panther 4 out. Of course, we could also just send in the Panther 4 to route that. That would be very easy. Oops, my apologies. Again, hitting up the right flank here. I mean, it's worth noting here that Finaston has so far not displayed any tends of just getting obsessed with one point, in particular the center point. He's sort of been able to keep himself flexible and maneuverable. That's his own gun. There's certainly been a few mistakes here and there, but it's not because you know, just say, you know, utterly obsessed at one point and just refused to give up on it. So, thumbs up there to Finaston. Thumbs up. But I do feel like Finaston would benefit a lot from some sort of chili. You know, Mortar, I think, would do Finaston a lot of good. He would give him a lot more mileage versus his own gun for doing his attacks. But uh, he does not go for it. Possibly he's not considering. He just decided it's not worth it. It's hard to say there. But I do feel like even a mortar there would have up for Aston. There's also the option of a Scott. Which I think could also be quite good here versus Undriving. So we'll have to see if he does go for it. But I would recommend it. Big two points why so. Undriving still in the lead. But the lead is much smaller. And there you go. Jackson takes the right here from the pack 40. You know, American tank the source broken top because, well, it gave the crews better line of sight. Maybe they could see better around. It also decreased the load on the tank destroyer on the hull. And that's leave it also kind counter cheaper. Never mind, they weren't intended to go up in close quarters then with the with fighting with the enemy. So that's, again, it also made sense there. So those are the reasons they had there. So we're keeping them top. Of course, also meant if infantry somehow did get closer, then they'd be in a lot of trouble. So you just need to pop up a grenade. It also meant they were vulnerable to air burst shells as well, which is actually causing their time to retreat from fighting. And I think there were some cases in the Hurricane Forest where tank destroyer crews basically just got out of the fighting because they were at the Germans would begin firing air burst shells at them. At which point the tank destroyer crews would end up very dead. So that's a little fun note there. Lieutenant moving up against the Grenadiers, light machine as well, they almost got a wipe there, Jackson moving up, he got a Panzer squad out there. Well obviously he goes to the Panzer Shrek, so he's just using them regularly, I mean regular Panzer leads are quite good. They could also understand the Panzer Shrek here. We'll have to see though. Grenadiers right here by the 5th cover, got them triggering about as well, Panzer 4 under fire from the Jackson tank destroyer. Shot fired. Panzer Grenadier waiting with their Sturmgewehr 44. Got the pack forward, being hauled forwards. Ungarden, I think, wants to put more pressure on the flanks here against Van Asten. And Van Asten, I think, besides the silly, could also benefit from, you know, a few more mines here and there to slow down Ungarden's kind of attack. So, again, we got mine for people, so obviously, it's not going to be super effective. I think, though, compared with the Van Asten, Ungarden could learn to flank a bit more. Or at least use his smoke strings a bit more to back up his attacks a bit better. Just a bit. Oh dear, Pani's need to retreat soon here, then a really bad spot, and there we go, routed by Fanassan and his merry band of boys. And there, got a hit from the Jackson, the Panther, four foot mortifier ring down the fifth cover there, bad spot though to be in, right pushing out the center. And I feel like could exert more influence on the left side, and also I think deep on the right side, again, he's, I think, a bit too focused on just this strip of land there, which makes it easier for Fanassan to defend. But now I think Fnassen is stalling up here for the Pershing. He's got the Jacksons, you know, help hold up against Armour while he goes for it. Ungarfen, is he taking up there? Yes, he's gone for tier 4, so we might be seeing some heavy armor there soon enough versus Fnassen. Still no doctrine for Ungarfen there. Not entirely sure what he's planning here. Not entirely sure. Panzer 4, I need some lighter repairs. Kind of take the other from Aston against Ungarfen head on though. And that's you noting, know, he actually managed to grab a fifth cover there from Van Aston. That's pretty big there for Ungarfen. More suppressive path for him is good. <laughs> Obviously, a lot less good for Van Aston. And there you go, Ralph from the fifth cover that you immediately suppressed. 
Smotion down here. Very good move there by Angreifen. And we got Finesse there going for Chalice. He's not going for the Pershing after all. At least not right now. He's going for the Scott Possible realizing he fi finally realizes he needs the artillery. So, you know, better late than never. Bipic over there, right in front of all the kind of these light machine guns and white. Very nasty spot there, being cautious with the fifth cover there, and Uncle was able to rate the rewards with grisly glee. And there you go, fifth caliber is now his there. So he's got now three machine guns versus Fanaskin's one. That is a bit of a turn around there, and does seem to be that Uncle is slowly building up here, looking to take advantage of any step there Fanat is making, destroying his forces in detail. And there you go, smoking again on the center this time around. He's using the smoke in this case, I think, to sort of isolate different parts of Fnaston's force so that way they can easily deal with the others nicely, which again is technically very sound there by Angreifen. Well, there you go, Scott out for Fnaston and the 6th Armour. 5th Gun MG42 stalling up the assault. We've got the 5th Gun joining in against the MG42. Scott, though, could also be joining in with a good barrage. And there you go, exactly that. He's also calling in artillery at the same time. I, th I think that might be a bit much there. There you go, Tilly almost got the MD-42, oh! Gets away, they're really close there though, really close. Got the fifth gun to fire here from the Scott. And almost got that one as well, I'm having his force to abandon the front line here in the face of Fanaston and the 6th Armoured Division's voracious assault. And there you go, the heavy panzer got for Angarten. Will it be Panthers? Will it be Storm Panthers? Will it be Panzerwerfers? Who knows? Ooh, mine spotted and swept away. Going to be easy versus Rifleman. MG42. Oh, that's the fifth carbac just setting up. And there you go. Rifleman it off as well. Rifleman routed. Troops here reinforce him. You got Lieutenant Major on the flank, but there you go. Kind of these the light machine with fifth car being hauled forwards as swiftly as possible. MG42, they're being moved forwards as well. Nice hit on the mortar. Fifth cover joins in. Hey, Panzer Corps remains silent for now here. Van Greifen and the German army. Another fifth cover on the way there for Nasten. Again, he's getting close to the Pershing. The dream of the American big tank team. Fifth Cavalry can quickly reposition as the gun is advancing. Pioneers on the way there for Angreifen. And routed. Back here, troops reinforcing. Pioneer squad number two almost done there for Angreifen. Oh, well, he's actually lost the previous Pioneer, so I guess it's number one. But there you go, Fifth Cavalry to the other Fifth Cavalry plus the other 50 caliber. That's two 50 caliber versus one 50 caliber. It's a lot of 50 cal, and uh, <laughs> holy smoke, someone got sent flying there as the last guy just wanted to get out of there. Angreifen finally going for Darkton, almost half an hour into the game, he goes for Jaeger Infantry. That's definitely a bit weird, since usually Jaeger Infantry is what Darkton you want faster. But obviously, though, he goes for Ambush Camouflage in the 50 cal, because that'd be really good. Even the MD42 at T3 is really good for the Ambush Camouflage. Uh, Part me suspect he might just be going for, for the artillery and the stupid close air support at this point. But again, Ambush Camouflage is really good. It really is. Scott firing away there. Machine gun there taking losses from Van Aston Scott artillery fire there. Jackson falling back. Kennedy's moving up through the center here, swiftly advancing with light machine guns in hand. Back here, troops are reinforcing Fort Angreifen. Kennedy's moving in there, quickly writing the rifle squad on the left flank, and send it scanning away. Finesson's line is actually starting to bug a little bit now. And he's obviously concerning resources for the Pershing, whereas Angreifen's got none of that holding him back. But he's close to the Panther, 50 cops going up in the center, the ace, machine gun crew versus the Panzer IV. Who will win? Well, that's going to be obvious. And he's got the M2 up against the 50 carbot. Ooh, flanked here. Closing in on Vets 3. Panzer following in for the east. 
Back here, troops healing and reinforcing. Fornassen does seem to be starting a bit more with the flank. There you go, we got something happening on the right flank. The left flank, though, seems a bit abandoned. Mortar firing down. Fornassen's got the fuel. He just needs some manpower now here for the Pershing heavy tank here. This is Angreifen and the Panzerlehr Panzerbischung. Bigger push through the center and the right side here against Angreifen. This line once more finds itself pressured. Not outmaneuvered. Scott taking a few shots here and there. Bit kind of ear hot there for Ungarden versus Van Asten. Need to be careful of the Scott could be quickly do some heavy damage to that. Basil apparently wants some attention. The adorable little fluff ball. We got lights of the call in here on the 50 cover. The lights is in front of the barrage. Raining down death there on the 50 cover crew. Starting to wipe them out any moment now. Basil sort of jumping up in front of the microphone, so if things are a bit muffled, I do apologize. I'm just going to quickly grab him and ow. He's going to crawl up on my shoulders and lay down behind my head. And begin purring. 50 cover there on the front of the other 50 cover in the Panzer 4 there. Oh, that's the MD 42. Routed and wiped. That actually means, oh, he's down just now. 150 caliber again. That means Angrav now has four machine guns. Three of them, 50 caliber machine guns. That's a lot. Heavy Panzer call and remain silent for now. He can't really go for anything for it except Panzer Bevers, and I don't think he wants to go for that now. So he's actually a bit overburdened by uh, units in that sense. Going for a big push, and there you go. Von Aston finally can call in the M26 Pershing Heavy Tank. About to lay down the law of Uncle Sam. And there you go, double fifth cut moving ahead. The Iron Garden is going to be caught a bit unprepared here as the M26 moves up against them. Shoots and causes quite a few casualties. They could even wipe out one of them. The there we go, wipe. Second one could also go down. We got airport that called in here by Angai from the Stukas come f swooping in like hawks. Sit the head all the light vehicles on the flank. And oh the M20 takes out one of them. Scott though, the crew is dead or routed. Oh no, they're caught repairing here by the grenadiers, and the crew got slaughtered like lambs. Pershing there getting heavily damaged by the Panther Files. We got the pack 40s moving in here. This is a bit bad. We got the Panther moving in. He needs to get the Jackson up. The support needs infantry. But right now he's sending the Pershing too far that he got too eager. And now he could risk getting punished here aggressively by Angreifen and the Panzer there, Panzer Dijon. Sure. Pack 4 trying to, the he's trying to use the house here to bait them into position and the pack of Pershing can deal with them nicely. Oh dear, might be a bit careful. Cautious, need to be careful over the pack 40. Moves the strength of the fifth cover, got Lieutenant rushing forwards, and there you go. Pershing lands a nice hit, almost got the pack crew there. B crew needs to get quickly back out there to the Scott and recruit. All machine guns sitting up here in the center, it seems like here, and pushes back the Jackson. Not because I think it's wildly threatened by it, but probably because it's a good idea not to move ahead where the infantry can't follow. Troops are healing and forcing, pushing the deep still need the repairs. Right side, there's a bit open here, there's now Ungarth is dictating the punches, and he's clearly threatening the west side, so for now, he's on the defense routine for now, despite actually having a larger force. Ungarden by the connection now go for the Panther, the Panzer Kampfwagen fünf for the so size, and there you go, could lose the Panther for, and there you go, Panther is on the way here for Ungarden. Panther for dodges them, very close there, though he almost lost it, pushing the center, but there you go, Ungarden remains ready for Deutschland. Panther slowly getting ready there. Fixing up his vehicles, fixing up the Pershing. Puns are going to be advancing here. No ambush camouflage there for Angreifen. He, I guess, doesn't care about it, which is a shame. It is a good ability. M20 there, fighting away. We've got 21 kills in it. Very nice work there. Pershing is almost fixed up. There you go. I think he's finding himself a force there. Oh, he's moving up the other crew to help repair as well. Panther almost on there for Angreifen. The German army, die Deutsche Panzerwaffe. Basil seems uh, 
back for more attention, having Bruce with an up on the shoulders and then jumping back down. There's a bit of a strange cat like that. Nice, she's sort of lying down on the floor. Looking a bit, uh, I don't know, cat like. Pack what? Like, that's actually a bit of a problem there for one guy from the bitch since he's got another anti tank weapon. Of course, now he has the Panther up, but a person with a Jackson plus a stolen anti tank could be a bit of a problem there for the Panther. So, Ungarth needs to choose his next steps carefully, otherwise, Fonesson could deliver a very crippling blow there to Ungarth and, and possibly win the match right then and there. So, Ungarth has plenty of infantry, which is certainly good for him. Fonesson, on the hand, is a bit lower there, but he has tons of munitions. I think a push with combined arms and infantry and arm all work together, I think, could be quite good, in particular, they're also combined with smoke. Maybe a few grenades, to where to research that. For now, though, Fnaston seems to be cautiously... Oh, no, not so cautiously moving up the west side, but there's no armor support. That having said, the armor's moving up in the east with next to no infantry support, which is actually a bit more risky. West side, there, the infantry advances. Panther's holding that one, and it probably should be the Panther 4. On the east side, we got the Pack 4, did you see it? There's the Panther, or the Pershing. Panther with damaged engine, 50 cups up to cover against them. might try and take it out. We got 209 versus 240. We got the ace machine gun holding up for Nassim's influence in the east. Oh, Paz was straight into the Scott there. 11 kills. Veterans 1 there. Panther in repairs. Panther Volder, of course, is also and probably should go for more pioneers to repair. And there you go. Veteran feed on Unguidance Granada and Merfa. Need to fix up that Panther. Schnell. Also, a many big thanks to Hagen for pledging on Patreon and supporting the propaganda cast. You're part of my company here. Two thumbs up. Anyways, just quick note there. Thanks. Person being fixed up. 11 kills for America. Panther almost good to go. Troops are reinforcing. Healing. We'll have to see where Ankar decides to lay his next blow here. This is for Aston. Vanessa really could benefit a lot from laying down mines, and he's got plenty of munitions for it. He just doesn't seem to be using it as an unguard, and definitely is using his munitions, I feel, a bit more actively. So advance here for unguard, a bit of a creeping attack here. Versus Van Aston. Then we got push up the west side here with 5th caliber. Looking to outmaneuver Van Aston there a bit. Those are taking a nasty hit from the Pershing. 13 kills. You can see further crushing casualties there from the American heavy tank. And there you go. Several Grenadiers force. In fact, all of them routed, leaving just the Panzer Grenadiers to hold the line against America. And these rather than they could fit in the fuel point, shift also the victory point. That probably should be his bigger priority there to keep up the bleed. Oh, got the mortar. And he's got the machine gun there as well. Very good play there by Fanaston and Scott. Pershing Jackson hanging back. Panther moving up, going straight for the Scott in the M20. And with no mind to see the Panther come up free, though we can see that Rankov is not just rushing in because it's probably where he might have laid down mines. Though again, I don't think at any M20 mine or regular mines there even, so. He could again charge him, but he doesn't know. And in this case, if you risk losing a Panther to that, I mean, it's obviously better just not to get in the old society. Oh, he needs to get out of there, but he's calling air support in the midst here. He's going to have to get his stuff out. The person thing hits here from the pack forties as well. Ooh, got the anti-tank gun there. Puzzle needs to be careful. They're closing right out. The house is ready to collapse. And there you go. Jackson, they're taking hits here from the air support. Panther moving in. Pershing's moving in it through the zone of control there of the Luftwaffe's aircraft. There you go. Jackson down. Panther there, half health. But still, the Pershing's in the line of fire of the Stukas. This could prove to be a fatal mistake here for Van Aston as he pulls back the Jackson. There you go. We got the Luftwaffe moving in. The third one can is there, punching away and tearing apart the Pershing. Leaving Van Aston just for the M20 and the Scott. No, it's actually just beyond it. Still, he pops up just to be sure he doesn't want to risk it. A more punish when they've uncovered repair stuff. But still, quite a blow there against Van Aston, losing his Pershing and his Jackson a short amount of time there without getting the Panther either. That's a definite tactical win there for Angreifen and the German army. Basil's on the move again. 
Panzer IV, they're firing away. Half eight of it, 22. And we got combined arms. I feel like the time for this is sadly a bit off. Since it's got no armor working in the infantry. I might just be using it because he just wants to burn through the munitions. I don't know. But I mean, and it's not a bad ability. It's just... It requires a bit of setup. Still, he's managed to at least regain one of the victory points. That they're from there. Uh, Ungreifen. And I think at this point he's just going to go for another Pershing here. Versus Ungreifen. And the Deutsche Armee. Panzer IV there. Close to being good. Panzer is going to need some more time. He's got two Pioneer Squads out now. That's very good. And there he goes smoking down here. This time though, from Van Aston. But uh, with the Panzer is in the way though, it doesn't quite work out. As well as it hoped. And there you go. Second Pershing out. Hopefully lasting longer than the first one. More to bank control here as well for Ungarden. Quickly smokes the 50 gold there. Thumbs up. Pershing crashing through the terrain for Nash and he is on the warpath. He's angry. Angry about Nazis. Panzer's there routed by the Pershing. In the West Light vehicles falling back here in the face of Ungarden's assault. Fifth Guard hanging back here. The enemy is overrunning one of our capture points. Pershing versus the machine gun crew there. And almost wiped. Troops are healing and reinforcing. We're paying and setting up for the next push. All sectors, all sectors. Ability now ready. Pack 40 is short. They guess Ungarden didn't want it back. Still making a push into the east. There's also making for the center. Vanessa's forces are looking a bit weaker now. Smaller there compared to what Ungarden's got. And there you go. Panther versus the Pershing. Damage in the Panther. Half feet of it, 22. So we got Pack 40s backing up the Panzer Kampfag from the center of 5th Cup there, being wiped out by all of the firepower the Ungard brings there against it. Personally, John's in the front. We got the Pack 40 responding here in kind with a nicely positioned armor piercing round. M20 fixed up. Moving in to fix up the Pershing. As Ungard and Creeps ahead once more here versus Van Aston. And there you go, more firepower running down. Scott is. Uh, Joining a bit at the front. A rifleman versus Panzer going to be a close game at T2 there, very closely. Ramping murder, we got the Gabalta Lightning off. Ooh. Ambulance went down. Was that another case of just stray shot? I think so. Wow. Very often get that many two hundred matches with that in a row. I think that's the first time. At least that's the only thing that that set it off there because you know. anyways. Pershing here that's the Panther 4. Panther 4 version 2 by the way with shuts and up. We got 26 was 131. The situation slowly trading here for for Nassen and he needs to pull off some sort of I think strong maneuver Zankart needs to throw him off. But right now he's just sort of limiting himself to counterattacks versus Ungarfen, local small ones. That's not really, I think, going to sort of seriously upset the status quo there. And only reinforce, I think, Ungarfen's lead. He needs to pull off a really strong flank that just demolishes several of Ungarfen's key support units. But uh, so far he's not quite setting up for that. Fifth Cabo opening up, they're gaining Vetsion to 2 in the process. Fixing up the Pershing and the West we got the Panther as the Lieutenant. There you go, Panzer up the canal and lands another hit here in the Pershing. Scott there, half eight of it's in the three. And we got smoke off here against Ungarfen on the fifth cover there. Nice setup there. Fifth. Gone fan to tanks and caps who rather late into the game, but you know, better late than never. Grenade here against Rafa holding them up there. Panzer is doing what they can for the father men there with the Sturmgewehrs. With their grit. And the tank and armor's down here for Nasten. He's not really making much progress here. Panzer was there with the Panzer IV. Really stalling up. Rafa got the Pershing going in though. Direct hitting on the Panzer IV, but we got the Panther going in there. Going straight here for the Scott. Nobody can sort of really stop it, nor armor. Really stop it either. 
Panther taking a few hits, but he's very close to eventually two and oh misses. Who's being suppressed here? Right from gonna that. Oh got another 50 cover there. Manassan lost so many 50 calibers. Drew's being obliterated here to try to defend here in the right flank, but he's just not working out. There you go, Persian Moon shoots, but there you go. Panther gets a hit, gains 52 shots, and added to the mighty Panzer Kampfwagen Fund. Manassan is bleeding out of victory points swiftly. And there you go, Persian's almost down here to the Panther. Direct hit from the entertainment that bounces, and we got air support called in again here to try and finish off. The Pershing anti tank crew expires. Panther goes for it. Air support a bit slow, but there you go. He takes on the Scott inside the base, leaving Fnatic with nothing there. Leading out two points still. Panther's almost got the Pershing. Going in there. Oh, using the train to help maneuver. Oh, no, he moves correctly. Misguessed where the Panther or the Pershing was, but there you go. Shot bounced. Panther or Pershing, they did not bounce shot off the Panther. Still up close with this much health. The Panthers should have the advantage here. Half H of Exony 3. Empty pushing up here through the east west side spot. And there you go, pushing down. Panther 4 down, though. Still, with this, Fnatic has lost most of his forces. And with that, it is GG. Game over. A loss here for Fnatic America. A victory for Angreif and for Deutschland. Nice play here with both sides. Really good play. But Fnatic, I feel like, could use his munitions more efficiently. Either grenades and mines a lot of the time. I think we've done a lot there versus Fnatic on Angreif. And again, I feel like some earlier trilogy with more smoke could also have done better than supporting some of Van Aston's assault and made it harder for Ungarven to defend. Ungarven, of course, slightly weak in the early game, but still was able to turn around nicely and exploit Van Aston's mistakes and slowly but surely build up there and sort of, you know, win the game. So, really well played by both sides, but in the end, Ungarven just persevered just a bit better. So, there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned something from it. If you did, subscribe, like, share, comment on it, tell your friends, tell your family, but don't tell your enemies. This is Imperial Links in Tears. Thank you for watching. You all are one wonderful audience. Hope to see you all tomorrow again for another episode. Bye.